Greg Martin out of Australia. Um, big lunch. I know you've stepped out on that. Thank you so much, mate. Two Catholic schools, very tribal match in Brisbane tomorrow. Now, I'm a Catholic. So you'd better say something appropriate here, pal, because otherwise, when you get up to the pearly gates and you're sitting there and you see Devlin swimming with the lesbian angels and you're going, I want to be part of that dance party over there, and you're knocking on that door and St. Peter opens the door and he goes, oh, smarty pants old Mardo, eh? Never a Catholic, were you? Go to purgatory for a thousand years, mate! They picked me to MC this affair because I'm, I'm a non-denominational character. But I did look up there, St Joseph's College, both of the schools. They're the two biggest rugby schools in Brisbane. Do you know what St Joseph did? Can I give you a quick education? I've never read the Bible. I better get round to that before uh, I pass. But yes. um, St Joseph was the father of of Jesus. Yes. So really, he was the foster father because we know about the Immaculate Conception. So I'll be taking all these Catholics through it. He was, of course, the uh, man who Jesus did his apprenticeship with. So he's a very important figure in history. So I'll treat it with the uh, respect that it deserves here at this large lunch this afternoon. Well, also, he's the father of figure of you doing the work you're doing on your batch, mate. Every hammer, every nail, every plank, That's right. e- every plane, every screw, that is St. Joseph. He's on your shoulder. Yep, he is the patron saint of carpenters. So uh, I do respect it tremendously, mate. I'm underqualified to be at a Catholic rugby lunch, let's put it that way. So I'll just do my normal stuff and they'll boo me off, I would guess. Well, you see, he might be the patron saint, but of course, Mrs. Marto is actually God. <laughs> <laughs> see where I'm going with this? See where I'm going with this? Joseph That's might be sitting there saying, Greg, I used to... Mrs. Mrs. Marto going, whatever, Joseph, I want it to look like this. Well, that's exactly how it plays out. As you know, happy, happy wives occasionally get sex. <laughs> We got big test matches this week here, mate. Okay, we got Argentina. Yesterday, I don't know whether it made the news over there, but it should have. The Argies went to a barbecue last night. This made our sports news. They ate 107 <laughs> kilos worth of steak, sausages, lamb, pork. Ro- you know, now, if there was a story about a women's team eating 107 kilos, we'll go, oh, you sexist pigs, you sexist pigs. These guys, apparently, mate, there was not an animal that was that that did not escape Christchurch. I'm talking goat, I'm talking dog, I'm talking horse. You're telling me I should put some money on the All Blacks because they <laughs> might be a bit heavy-footed. <laughs> um, are you are you meat-shaming the Argies? Because that's what they do. You, have you ever been to Argentina? I never have, but everyone steaks, says, so yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. The stakes go over the edge of the plates on both sides. It's just extraordinary what these blokes are up to and you wonder why they're big. Actually, uh, no, they won't be the All Blacks, so... Uh, they might as well have fun. They're just on a on a mystery tour. Are they two weeks in a row in, yep. in, uh, in yep. New Zealand? They yep. are, aren't they? Yep. Yep. Jesus. You, you'll have to send for reinforcement meat from us. No, send no. some over. Well, you won't allow, oh, we, we won't allow it in because it won't be vaxxed, mate. So go down to Adelaide, okay? Now, you tell me, who was the marketing ponytailed nosed ring craft beer brewing barista knob that actually decided Adelaide was a great <laughs> idea? You tell me who it was, mate. Adelaide. Are you talking the home of Australian rugby, yes. Adelaide? Is that what you're talking? That's what I'm talking. Do you know? Do you know the history of rugby at Adelaide? In 2003, Australia beat Namibia there, 142 to zero, the greatest margin in Tier One. Oh no, Tier whatever, Namibia. Era, the greatest victory in Test rugby, 142 to zero, and they're taking it back to celebrate that magic moment when probably we should have been playing Namibia a lot more over the last few years and a lot less of you blokes. So, in other words, the South Australian government threw in about $10 million to have people over there eating and drinking for a few days. Right. That's what this is all okay. about, okay. Adelaide. Never, ever has Adelaide and rugby been said in the same sentence, but you'll enjoy it. Okay, all right. Well, you got the Wallaroos and the Black Ferns before that, and we're hoping yeah. to put on 100. We're yeah, probably yeah, 100 exactly. points, mate. Probably put it home. Greg Martin, Triple M out of Brisbane with us, a man's show, talking about man's things. Tim Payne, Davey Dum Dum. Who has got more hope, Tim Payne returning to cricket or Davey getting the VC back? Well, Tim Payne, if anyone remembers, stepped down after a sexting scandal. Anyway, um, yeah, he's 37. Do we really need him back? I don't think so. So he'll just chip away in the background, mate. Everyone loves him and uh, and everyone. Yeah, anyway, and Dave Warner, Yeah. how much longer does he have to pay for that sandpaper? Like... They they came down, lifetime ban for a piece of sandpaper. Fair dinkum. There's no kids running around. Have you seen any kids following that message? No, There's I haven't, no, no kids no. with sandpaper working on the ball. So it had no real impact. It was just moral outrage, as always. 
oh, we better appease everybody. And poor old Davy, I know he's, I know he's Davy Dum Dum. He probably shouldn't be captain because he wouldn't be able to count to eleven. But he's a bloody good batsman. So if he wants to be, it's only T Twenty teams that they're going to make him a captain of anyway. Who cares? Okay, well, so see, let him back. The, the other thing is, of course, he served his penance. Is that you know when you actually say that, I hadn't thought of that. But obviously, Tim Payne in the sexting that is just endemic across the world, and he's obviously responsible for it, isn't he? What was wrong with him sending a couple of naughty do it messages to a woman he was actually having sex with? What the whose business is it? Apart from theirs. Well, his wife. Oh, um, no, okay. And, okay, sorry. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's that bit, but yeah. that's okay. We're, we're, but again, that's not our business, you know. Well, his suspension has been he's had to spend the last two years with his wife, and as you know, cricket is like to be away from home for 11 months of the year. Yeah, good point. Sexting, that's yeah. what they do, okay. and yeah. sometimes playing cricket. Um, so they've made him stay at home, so the poor bugger, no wonder he wants to come out and play cricket. He'll want to play until he's 50. We have avoided this topic for the whole of our conversation so far. So welcome to the world of the Warriors, mate. We're hoping tonight that Penrith raise the bat, put a ton on us, and actually at least go past the score that the Tigers got belted with 72. But in the last couple of weeks, 60 points and then a 53 last night at home. What the hell's wrong with you a lot? They don't want to tackle. They've missed 119 tackles, the Broncos, in the last two weekends. I don't know what it is, but... uh... Uh, mate, do you know, like things like we're missing a few players, and the whole of Brisbane's in mourning this morning because everyone told us it's like the Wallabies. Oh, you you raise the expectations and then you deliver these crap performances, and you go, oh, not that again. The Broncos are doing that to us. We thought we were going to make the finals five mm. weeks ago. Oh, Jesus, we're back, we're yep. back, and people are bringing out their Broncos gear. And today at op shops all over Brisbane, Broncos gear has been handed in and uh, hopefully sold off to some homeless people. It's very sad, and I don't 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 scratch the wound. It's very ugly over here. Well, how is it? But you've got you got, got nothing, mate. We got the Warriors. We were told last week by Stacey Jones that nine of the thirteen didn't actually want to play. Had no pride in the jersey. Seventy point mauling by Melbourne oh, earlier in the year. Nathan Brown said they gave up. Tohu Harris said they got to look in the mirror and ask if they want to do this as a job, mate. And you know, these, are guys, these are guys who get paid to play, remember. That's their job. So this is like you deciding That's... right now that I'm not going to turn up for work on Monday. Actually, I won't even turn up on Tuesday. In actual fact, what I'll do on Wednesday is just go there and say I'm not going to work. How long is that going to last before your boss says something? Thank you, but you make me feel a lot better being a Broncos fan. I feel terrific, you know. At least I'm not a Warriors fan. Yeah. I feel great. Yeah. But do you know, I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give the Broncos got some, some, some sort of problems as you've got. That's Selwyn Cobbo, the origin, state of origin winger. All right, he came to Kevy Walters on Tuesday and said, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> I don't think I can play. Uh, and and Kevy said, fine. But I, I, I started to dig a bit deeper. He played three games in the origin. Then he had three games off. Then he's played three games, and I think he's probably going to want the next three weeks. He's become a fly-in, fly-out worker. Three on, th- three off, this bloke. So yeah, well, we're, yeah, If you haven't got your best winger on the field, how can you do anything? Mate, I didn't realise the Warriors are that bad. I, yeah. We were just having a giggle at them. I didn't realise they were laughing stocks. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, it's pathetic, What do you it? do? Do they steal some more All Blacks? Steal some more All Blacks? No. The All Blacks lend them some. Look, well, as far as and you want to read the CEO, the CEO comes out every week. I'm not joking, mate. This guy Cameron George, I call him Planet Cameron because he lives on his own planet, mate. And every week he says the same thing. And we're right on track. The season's exactly as we planned it. It'll be better next season. <laughs> Nothing wrong here. It's all. I mean, honestly, you sit there and you go, I want what you take every morning, Cam. Yes, give me three of those, mate. Give yeah, me three of those. Isn't that good that he can say a so upbeat after all the pathetic pummelings I've received. That's great. Yeah. Well, he's a man who should be in charge because he's offering me hope. I'm thinking about getting a membership to the Warriors for next year if mm-hmm. they're going to go that well. All right, then. Novak not allowed into the US Open. Remember how he f- he just filled the forms out wrong at Australian Immigration? He didn't know that when they say, are you vaccinated, you tick yes or no. He didn't know. Well, I don't think anyone cares about Novak Djokovic. He's the most reviled player in the world, but he's also the number one. It's a f- strange old juxtaposition. Well, that might open up a chance for our Nick Kyrgios to win. That'd be great. So what do you reckon got more no. chance of happening? Kyrgios wins the Grand Slam or the Warriors win this year's Premiership? Yeah. Oh, Kyrgios. <laughs> I think we're pretty clear on that. I think, yeah. He actually, uh, oh, no, he gives up as well. Jeez, there's a lot of people giving up these days. You repeat after me <laughs> before you go back to the lunch, mate. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and don't you get a single syllable of this wrong, mate. Oh, hold on, I'll need that written down. <laughs> do I have to do the Lord's Prayer and stuff like that? Oh, I'm out of my depth, mate. I'm out of my depth when it comes to the Lord.